process, a daily process that grows. You are saved when you accept the Christ as your personal Savior. And then if you fail in anything, you go back and ask for forgiveness. And God is a forgiving God. But you begin a process of growing more and more to His image. More and more to Him. So when you first got saved, and many people got saved, uh, their mind needs to be changed. Their, their uh, ways of seeing things need to be changed. Um, people come from the street or from a life of, of, of un, you know, heathen and ungodly, and they come to the, they hear the gospel in the radio, or you testify, or they come to church. But then in their mind setting, they're still in another channel. So they go back to their friends, and they encounter things of the best. <coughs> and that's when the Spirit, that's when the Spirit ministers to them. You are different. You are new. So we are being renewed in our life daily. We're growing daily. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. A new you. And then you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. It's a very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. That you put on the new man. We, we, we were all born with a fallen carnal nature. We were all from birth inclined to do the things of the world. Lie, cheating, and all those things that have to do with the world. We were born with that nature. The fallen age of nature of Adam and Eve. And, but when we come to the Lord, that is taken away, and now we have His nature. Now we are like Him. We are like Christ. We live like Christ. And uh, now uh, the thing of the past are the things of the past. Those that are in Christ have crucified the flesh and its desires. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when, we are, when we come to Christ, we crucify the old man. We, we still have the same name, but not the same person. Because you, are, you have been changed and transformed by the power of God. Amen. Amen. So, you are a Christ, and you have crucified. Paul says, it's not me that lives, but Christ lives in me. Amen. So, before you, you used to do all those things of the flesh, but now you see the things of the Spirit, and you see, see to please God. A truthful life. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Let me spend a little bit this, this verse. It's a beautiful verse, but it, it's a little connection. Putting away lying, my question is, why did the apostle bring lying as one of the issues? Because lies... Uh, destroy lives. Um, lies. Uh, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we need to pursue truth, not lie. And there are some people that are so good for lying and they lie so much that they end up believing themselves. Amen. It's just a lie. And uh, this is how we used to be. We used to be liars by nature. You're late for work and, you know, why are we late? Oh, there's a train. Actually, you, well, you, you woke, woke up late. There's a train. Or these or that. But tonight, for us, we speak the truth. No. 
And um, the lie, putting away lies, and uh, let each one of you speak truth, not lie, but speak the truth. And speaking the truth, our language, the sermon that I'm preaching to you is not coming from my mind. It was framed by the mind, but it's coming from my heart. If it was from my mind, it, it, it will be uh, an exhortation, a, a, a class. It was framed by the mind, but I'm preaching it to you from my heart. This is why when I speak, you feel the words that I speak. Because it's coming from my heart, from the anointing of the Spirit. <coughs> let, it, let each of you speak the truth. And when we speak from the heart, and if our, if our heart is, is, is right, we'll speak good. Let me give you a scripture. You've got to write it down because it's not in the notes. It's found in Matthew 12, 35. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bring forth good things. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings out good things. Uh, an evil man, out of the evil of his heart, bring forth evil things. That's Matthew 16, 35. A good man, out of the goodness of his heart, brings out good things. An evil man, <laughs> when he's in his heart, that's what he speaks. And then Luke goes as far as to say, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Have you ever they say something, they go, oops, I'm sorry. What do you mean I'm sorry? It was inside of your heart. That's why it came out. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yeah. It's not so much to speak with your knowledge, but your knowledge and, and with a feeling with a sincerity, with a, with a pure heart. Blessed are the pure of heart. Self-control. And it's all taken from the same passage. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give, give place to the devil. So it's telling me that uh, we, we sometimes can be angry. And anger, to a certain point, is, um, is not a sin. Be angry and don't, don't sin. You can get angry, but then you, you exercise self-control. Say, God, how many of you here, this beautiful audience, have never gotten angry? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Why don't you come up here so we can stone you? <laughs> you you're, driving to, you're driving home and you're thinking of that uh, beautiful pasta that you're 